So if you're watching these videos in order of the playlist, you may have noticed in the last video that all of a sudden there was some spoken word poetry going on there. <laughs> and you may be wondering what exactly that was all about. It's actually a really cool story of how that poem came to be, so I wanted to share it. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Raquel, and please remember to like and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in the content. So as I mentioned in my previous video, I was super fortunate for a period of my life to be invited to a lot of conferences and talks and events. One of these conferences that I was invited to was called the Engineering Change Lab. I'll put a link down below if you're curious to learn more about it, but Essentially, the Engineering Change Lab was defined as a microcosm of the system. Picture a group of CEOs, a group of deans, a group of academics, a group of industry, a group of students, all coming together to look at how they can improve the profession of engineering as a whole. I originally got involved with the Engineering Change Lab because I was working for Engineers of Tomorrow, which is an awesome not-for-profit that you should also check out. I'll link them down below. Engineers of Tomorrow and the Engineering Change Lab both were ventures under the Engineers Without Borders umbrella, but over time I actually got a seat on the lab and was an active participant as an EngCores Canada representative. And because of the kind of person I am, I get really passionate and really involved into basically everything I do. <laughs> the labs are super, super intense. You are three days in with like 10 hours of content. You're diving into these really big picture, really complex concepts, working together in groups, going through these like personal journeys basically in three days. At the end of the lab, we were all in a circle kind of giving a takeaway of what was important to us. And I was just really, really fired up about women in engineering and how intersectionality hadn't really penetrated that world at the time. It was sort of this like profound experience. <laughs> I had my notebook in front of me and I just had all this passion and fire and I just was scribbling down a bunch of stuff. And I remember my friend Brett was sitting beside me and he was laughing because he could like tell what was happening right then. So they're going around the circle. Everyone's kind of giving their takeaway. At this point, I have this like scribbled little poem and I'm like, okay, you know what? Like I want to deliver this. So I got up and I said the following poem and people like responded really intensely to it. And they were like, wow, this is awesome. And that's what inspired me to record it and put it on the internet. <laughs> The key takeaway of this poem is truly that intersectionality is really, really, really important and it can't be ignored. I will definitely do more talks about intersectionality on this channel in the future, but hopefully this kind of just illustrates the concept of intersectionality in a pretty cool way. As a reminder, I'm just kind of going through different videos and presentations I've done in the past right now, but in the future, what you can expect from this channel is a vlog about life, advice, and stories just from the perspective of a queer woman of color. So please like and subscribe and I hope that you have a great day. Bye. I want women in engineering. I want women of color in engineering. I want women who are queer, birthed from immigrants, grew up without a penny of excess, who are survivors of sexual abuse, who have a crippling anxiety that makes them fight their own brains in order to reach their full potential. And I want everyone to understand I did not just describe eight different women, I just described me. So I want every individual in my profession to fight tooth and nail to get women in engineering just like me.